Can you hear everyone? You see there's lots of people down there, but I can't really see you. Come up, come up the front. There's lots of seats here. And I can't I can't throw that far. And you'll throw about uh, two <laughs> Three rolls. I need to practice. We've got, we've got lots of sweets to practice with. So, uh, we're going to talk about MVC. And, oh, just need to switch to my presentation. There we go. That's me. Um, uh, some of you know me. Uh, I am Karen. Uh, I work for Cycle. Uh, it's true that I do work for Cycle. Uh, and I'm the farm manager for the Constant Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's the direction we get in the uh, interview. And, uh, and I, um, the Content Foundation is uh, basically the cycle CMS aspects, uh, not the, the UI as such, uh, but uh, it's all the uh, things under the waterline. So in, in the engine room, that's where I spend my time. And uh, uh, I am, in brackets, a cycle MVP. I've been many times. I keep finding new ways of uh, sneaking into that elite group of people uh, because I really enjoy that company. They're so smart, and uh, I always learn from them. And lastly, I love MVC. Um, and um, yes, uh, in this presentation, you will come on a journey with me, and we're going to talk about MVC, uh, and in particular, cycle MVC. And uh, it's going to be like a, a circus theme. I don't know if you've read my uh, synopsis. I'll be uh, I'll be doing some stunts up here, and uh, so join me in the <laughs> flying circus of uh, Psycho MVC. So, first of all, why what, why are we going to spend another hour on this Instagram going on about MVC? And I'll just put on some uh, opinions, perhaps, uh, and some observations, and. Uh, I don't want to press the fear factor, uh, but the way I see things going, Microsoft is not pressing as hard on the web phones accelerator as they are on all other aspects of the website. Um, that being said, uh, to focus on the positives, uh, MVC uh, gives you a lot of good traits. So when you start developing in an MVC fashion, um, you, you get some, some benefits. And we're going to examine some of them on the way. Um, but I don't know in this room how many are comfortable with MVC. You've got a show of hands. Who does MVC? Um, you all do MVC. Shall we skip the basic section? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll do it anyway because I think there may still be some things you can learn. Um, I learn all the time. And uh, we'll enter the arena and uh, do some, some basic stuff. So, um, I'm not going to do it in, in the order MVC, I'm just going to start talking about the different aspects of uh, MVC and design and data. So, what is a view? Um, well, if you take from this angle, you imagine you come to your browser, you view source, that's HTML, and a view is where all the HTML goes. And um, uh, in Sitecore, uh, we have some, some different things around uh, uh, this presentation. Uh, that are different from the old web forms way. And the three things that you really need to know is, uh, the, of course, the MVC layout, which is the same as a layout, except that it points to a CSH HTML file. Uh, the view rendering, which is, I guess, um, perhaps you could put it akin to what we use XSLT renderings for in the, in the old days. Um, and then we have something, uh, it's a bit of a misnomer, uh, controller rendering, which should actually probably have been called an action rendering. But it's called controlling. This has to do with a controller. Um, we also uh, have some some uh, less used uh, rendering types, and I don't think you need to know about them. I know that Cam uh, <laughs> used the method renderer in his presentation. I don't know why, um, because uh, well, anyway, we have these uh, uh, less used type. The, the content rendering only available from API uh, can output. Uh, Strings. Uh, the method rendering can call a function to, to or method to get some strings. URL renderer. This is if you. Uh, uh, well, I guess uh, there are use cases for calling off to another site to get some HTML, but uh, all of these here, the lesser type, you don't need to focus on them. Um, right. Uh, another aspect of views where Cycle has some involvement is uh, in the actual uh, user. Uh, we have a helper that gives you access to things like 
rendering a field, rendering a placeholder, and so on. And these, I guess, akin to the uh, the psycho web controls that some of you, for some reason, are still using. Um, and I think, uh, shall we uh, do a demo on some of this? Shall we have a look at it? Um, great, we'll do this is the studio here. I can just about see it down there. Uh, hang on, we'll actually start in uh, insight. Um, um, I guess I'm on, on the wrong screen here. Whoop, there we go. And we're back on Twitter. And I can hardly see anything down here. Where's the mouse? Uh, where is the mouse? There we go. You can see my little conversation with Kevin there. He's AWOL. No one knows who he is. Um, so uh, if you're doing uh, something, let's say that you want to build an MVC solution, uh, you go into layouts. This is where it's all happening. Because MVC, I guess I should have prefixed this. It's a, a, a architectural pattern for uh, doing UI. Nothing else. Just think it's only for UI. If you think that, then you're going to get far with it. Um, create a layout. Uh, we used to have a little bit of a, um, I guess, uh, 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 ah, great. Getting locked out as well. Um, you create a layout. Uh, it's the same template as it used to be, just point to a CSS HTML file. In 8.1, we actually introduced a, a, a Sitecore MVC layout. It's no different uh, from, it, it hasn't got anything special there. Um, and uh, then you create renderings. Well, let's have a look at uh, creating a rendering down here, insert. And you can see here we are, the ones we talked about before, method rendering, very popular. Um, the ones you'll be using is, of course, view rendering and uh, control rendering. I've cheated, I created one in advance. Um, and if we just go, you know, presentation, uh, there we go. Go and have a look in here. So this is a CSS HTML file that I created. It's the sample view rendering. Um, and uh, uh, as we talked about in here, you do HTML and then you do site call. I can't see what I'm typing here. Site call, am I typing it right? Good. Um, and in here, with a bit of luck, Visual Studio will give you some intelligence on uh, the different things you can call. You can think, see here's a begin field, for instance, rendering a field. Easy stuff. Um, and uh, but, you know, if you want to know more about this, there's an excellent source of uh, information, which is the uh, Psycho Community Docs, uh, has a good section on uh, getting started with MVC. So other important things uh, to think about uh, in here will be uh, your uh, views in here, let's just get it, your uh, web config under views. Uh, Psycho does add a little bit to this. You can create an MVC solution and you get all the scaffolding from Visual Studio. You do have to modify it as uh, Sean pointed out yesterday in the NuGet, there'll be uh, different references that you may need to adjust. But for views uh, in particular, uh, you need to go in and add some namespaces. This is a sort of a help, so you don't have to do it in every single view you create. Also, uh, be aware of uh, doing a, a view start modification. If you don't go in and change uh, the layout to null, all of your renderings are going to try and uh, put on a, a layout. It, it sounds weird because we have a name clash with MVC here. We both thought that it would be great to have something called a layout. Um, but there's a, a thing as a MVC layout, and then there's a sidecore MVC layout. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, so that was a little bit about uh, the view. If we quickly move on, uh, we get to the M in MVC, which is a model. And uh, I think there's a lot of debate around models. What is a model? For me, is a representation of uh, data and uh, perhaps also functionality. Um, so some people uh, who are very into domain driven design, they go for uh, uh, what's called a fat model that uh, has uh, both logic and uh, data. Um, some people favor uh, uh, skinny models that just have uh, uh, like DTO style uh, transferring data. Um, I think uh, uh, there's also some confusion about 
when you create models, should I create a view model, uh, which represents the view that you're rendering, or should I uh, just use um, a, a model that looks like the data? Uh, I'm not going to give you a best practice on it, because I think it's very much up to what you're, what you're doing, and you can choose your own style. Uh, specifically for Sitecore, we have a model you get when just doing views. It's called the rendering model. It gives you access to uh, the item representing the current page and the item uh, representing the currently set data source. Um, it's not a, 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 it may not fit every purpose, but um, it, this is where you can sort of uh, start uh, hooking into MVC. Uh, it's possible to overwrite the rendering model. And we have a pipeline, a pipeline for many things, and this one's called the MVC get model. And uh, this is where you'd go and uh, specify if you want a strongly typed model. So uh, if any of you use Glass or one of the other ORMs, um, then you you have this idea of uh, uh, instead of just having items where you look up in a dictionary for fields, um, you actually have a, a, a strong representation of how they should look. Um, in some cases, uh, for instance, uh, you will have it uh, completely auto-generated mapping directly to your item, or you could perhaps have something that's mapped uh, in some special way where you've decided how the model should look. I'll show you an example of uh, how to uh, do a, a strongly typed model with, uh, with just the tools you get out of the box from Sitecore. So the first thing to do is to go into Visual Studio again, and can you see? Because I can hardly see it. It's very far away. Anyway, um, I'll crawl up the tree here. And that was the views. There we go. And models. So when you do uh, the uh, Visual Studio scaffolding, you always get a models folder. It's empty. I'll put in one file here. And uh, you all know the sample item. It hasn't got much on there. Um, but imagine if you wanted to have a, like a strongly typed representation of the title and the text. Uh, and as you can see, I'm doing it in the dumbest way possible here, just for, for ease of use, uh, taking out the raw data of the field. Um, but I know now if I were to use this model in my view, uh, that uh, I, I don't have to guess what the uh, uh, field names are. Um, I can I can directly target these um, properties. So how do you how do you join that up? Um, so we had in Psycho a view rendering, and that's right there we go. And uh, not here, down there, and um, this one. So uh, I know that uh, I'm probably going to get booed now, and. Uh, uh, the, the cycle way of doing this is that you have a model field on your rendering. Where, <laughs> yeah, boo! Who said that? All right, shut up. <laughs> um, no, I, I will agree that this is not the most optimal way of doing it. We'll do it anyway, just for, for the sake of it. Um, so we'll insert a, uh, a model here. And basically, you have to link to another item that holds the uh, class name. So let's uh, wait for it to come alive again. Perhaps I got locked out. Did I press the button? <laughs> what, what, what? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're not going to experiment like that. Anyway, there we go. Select the psycho item. We're just um, taking a slight pause. Uh, and you can see I've already created an item called the sample item model. Uh, we don't need to inspect that item. The only thing it has a, is a field that contains the fully qualified class name. Um, and with that said, we can uh, uh, we can publish it. And um, actually, before I publish it, I'll do something else. I'll go into uh, the view here, and we'll just swap back to the. Where did we go? Is this the one? No, that's not the one. Uh, view rendering. Quick, quick, quick. Um, 
There we go. So I put mine on the sidecore here. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to where the location of the views uh, in a little bit. I'm going to put in something uh, just uh, on comment this. Um, Yeah, so what am I doing here? Well, I'm basically just saying the model for this view, uh, what is the type of it? Uh, and uh, we'll just do... Oh, sorry, let's check that out. That was just an example. Anyway, um, we'll do like this and then we'll... Get, that's good, who, who said that? Well done. I'll throw, I'll chuck sweets at you in a second. <laughs> there we go. And I'm just going to find a browser to show you this in. And the mouse is all over the place. There we go. Get back here. And now you see it as well. Um, this is the sound view rendering as it was. I'm just going to press F5 on that, let that spin for a little while. And then we can talk about the uh, the location of the views. So, so as you can see here, uh, uh, in the views folder, we have subfolders. Um, there's one called sample, there's one called share, one called cycle. Uh, basically, uh, in uh, pre-8.1, you would normally just put, put in the full path uh, so for, for your view. That would be sort of the convention that Psycho had. We have changed it now, so we follow the MVC um, conventions of a view resolution. Uh, so you can just put in the name of your view when you do a view rendering, and uh, it will try and locate the path for it, just as in a normal MVC. Let's just see if this one spun up. So if I do like that, well, that's a bit far. Like that, you can see that it's saying that the uh, model type is the uh, PsychoMVC presentation rendering model. If we go back in here and uh, um, just change uh, what we did here, the mouse comes over and we'll publish the item. It's okay. It's okay. And back up here, we're probably going to get a yellow screen. Oh, we didn't. Anyway, uh, the reason I didn't get a yellow screen is because they, it's just inheriting from the rendering model, so they're compatible. Um, it, the, the get model pipeline expects you to inherit for, or implement the I rendering model. Um, so how can I benefit? From, why am I doing all this? How will I benefit from this in the actual view? Well, there's one detail that you have to um, get in there. And I have it down here in my comment. Grab that line, put it up at the top. So you can, in an in, in a MVC view, specify the, the type of the model. It will use a dynamic model. I've grown down in my, in my comment there that if you use a, a dynamic uh, model, then you know, anything goes. There's no type checking on the properties. So uh, you can definitely shoot yourself in the foot. It's almost as bad as uh, uh, just accessing uh, fields on an item. <laughs> but uh, in this case, I've uh, put on a, uh, a model, and now when I uh, access the model in my uh, CSHTML, you can see that I can, again, get IntelliSense on, uh, hello, there we go. So I can see the different properties, the, I have got the title and text here somewhere. Anyway, uh, that means that uh, already at this point in time, you'll know whether you're uh, addressing the right thing. If you combine this with uh, one of the PsychoRMs, uh, you get a really um, good offering. So um, let's push this. Do a there we go. Boom, boom. And there we go. Out to the website. Let that spin for a bit and see what happens. Um, and back to the slides. Uh, so I put in a little picture here. Uh, you can see you, uh, where you point in the, the model. Uh, uh, that is uh, a part. Of, this is being uh, looked at by the uh, Get Model pipeline. Uh, I put a link at the bottom here uh, for uh, a blog post by Nathaniel um, about getting the model from the view, which makes much more sense than you don't have to specify it twice. Um, and it's definitely something that I think we should look at getting into the product as a, as a native feature. 
Um, good. Let's see what it came up with. Now you can see it's output title and text. See raw straight straight from the, the uh, field data. That's great. Okay. Uh, I think that's enough about the, the views. Uh, I think uh, the key takeaway here is that um, for uh, sort of a line rendering of items, you can use the, uh, the view rendering uh, and combine it with the uh, standard rendering model. Uh, I think if you are doing something more serious, uh, you should consider uh, using strongly typed models. Of course, on a controller rendering, uh, you're in full control of the model, and there's uh, nothing to do with the get model pipeline or eye rendering model. And talking of controllers, uh, uh, a controller in MVC is uh, a mechanism uh, that uh, doesn't really do much. It, uh, it looks at a request coming in, and it decides how shall we respond. Um, so it, it will have to prepare a model, uh, select a view, and uh, send that back, uh, uh, combine that and send it back to the, the user as a response. Um, the, uh, I think a, uh, a couple of common uh, misunderstandings is that a controller is a place where my uh, business logic can, uh, can reside. I don't think so. Uh, remember that MBC uh, was an architectural uh, pattern for UI, not for business logic. So where should it go then? Um, well, I suggest that uh, either you look at putting your business logic into services, or if you're a DDD style guy, then you probably put it in your uh, model as well. Um, but uh, uh, the controller should not do much. Uh, it should do very little. Um, and another misconception, we cycle ships with something called the cycle controller. That sounds great. I'm doing controller renders that do the cycle controller. The cycle controller is a mechanism that is meant for rendering the whole page. And so you don't need to inherit from it when you're doing components. Uh, you rarely need to inherit from it, uh, if ever. Um, it's, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Also, let's uh, just uh, talk a little bit about uh, the controller factory. Uh, that's the thing that uh, brings controllers to life. Um, when using uh, Cycle, we have our own controller factory. And uh, it has uh, some sp special behaviors. It has a, a, a hard wire way of coming up with a Cycle controller. Uh, and uh, it can get in, in the way of you if you're trying to do uh, things like dependency injection. Uh, so uh, I know one uh, dependency injection container like Windsor uh, will require you to all write the uh, MVC controller factory. In that case, you have to combine it with the cycle controller factory somehow. Um, other uh, DI frameworks use the dependency resolver. Uh, in that case, it's a bit easier. You can just set the dependency resolver and Cycle uh, uh, will use the dependency resolve to try and uh, get hold of controllers and their dependencies. We did a small change in 8.1 that made this a little bit better, uh, but it's still an area that we're trying to evolve and uh, get even better. Um, so that's a bit about uh, controllers and the controller factory. The next bit, uh, the silent R in MVC. Uh, I don't know why <laughs> it, it has so little emphasis, because it's so important. Routing, you know, when you put in a URL, where should it go? Um, so in Cycle, we already have this notion of uh, items deciding, you know, the, the URLs. And uh, MVC, uh, Cycle MVC hooks into this. Um, so if you have a MVC layout set on an item, it will switch to the MVC rendering engine. Um, of course, this conflicts a little bit with uh, the standard MVC routing. Uh, it doesn't conflict, but uh, it tries to hook in in the same place. Uh, use the same mechanism. Um, uh, I guess uh, one point here is that you can absolutely use uh, standard MVC routing. You probably should. Uh, in some cases, not everything needs to go to an item. Um, one thing uh, that has been a problem for the last uh, couple of versions is uh, a lack of async support uh, due to some complexities inside Cycle. Is something that we have solved, and it's going to come in the next version. And I think uh, um, uh, people will be happy with that. I don't know. Is anyone even 
fussed about async controllers. There's two guys down there, that's great. Well, um, cool. Um, one more thing uh, as we're just rounding off the basic section here is uh, some key files to think about. Uh, Sitecore MVC DLL, reference it. That's where you get all the cool stuff from. And there's a Sitecore MVC config. That's where we have all our settings. So if you need to switch something around. Uh, we do have plenty of pipelines. Uh, and sometimes we hook into the normal pipeline. Sometimes it's a only MVC pipeline. But it's all in the MVC config. So uh, easy to find. One last note, if you want to dig into a bit more detail, uh, David Morrison released a couple of years ago a, a diagram of uh, when things happen. Uh, and uh, it can be useful to go in and just have a, a, a look at uh, and, and figure out what is the order of things. Because uh, it's not uh, as straightforward as just hitting a controller. So lots of things in play here. All right. We are moving to the next section. Uh, the the, the uh, <laughs> wild animals. Uh, I'm probably going to get bitten here. Uh, I've so far played it, and uh, this MEC is, is the, the one solution that you're going to need. Uh, but of course, as with anything, uh, it's not that simple. Um, so there's uh, 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 over the last couple of years, I've sort of had a collection of. Uh, sharp corners that I can scratch myself on and uh, uh, that uh, people come to me and say, this, this really is uh, troublesome. So let's go and try and look at some of them and how you can address them. So um, rendering order and communication between uh, components. Uh, there's no uh, page lifecycle in the sense that you know from web forms. Uh, in web forms, you actually had an opportunity to orchestrate things before the page was rendered. Uh, no more. <laughs> uh, when MVC starts rendering, it goes uh, top to bottom, uh, no pausing in between. Um, so that can be a problem. So you could have, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, one component that impacts another component. Uh, uh, example could be that you have a search box and a search result in different placeholders. Now, how do they communicate? You know, what do they do? Um, and also things like uh, you know once the response headers have been sent, there's no redirecting. <laughs> it's, it, it has been sent. Right. What do we do about it? Uh, I was going to say one last time. Uh, I'm going to talk about inside out rendering because I don't think uh, many people have picked up on one this yet. This is a mechanism in uh, standard MVC that we also have access to in Cycle MVC. And uh, it serves the purpose of, uh, I guess, solving this uh, uh, problem of you may want to, at some point in, in the page, impact uh, the, uh, let's say, something in the HTML head. Now, if the HTML head has already been written, what do you do? Uh, I'll put on a, a gist here. I'm just going to open that. And uh, let's see. So this is something, I, I think I did this uh, original just, uh, am I online? I hope so. Yeah, I did that. Can you see that? Do we need to dial it up? Um, the first here is a, a standard uh, a MVC view, uh, oh, sorry, a layout. Um, and uh, imagine in this scenario, I put in here a comment in the head that uh, a component in the placeholder below needs to put something there. How do we get about that? Because we know that when the head's written, then uh, there's no you know, there's no going back and rewriting the HTML. Uh, a solution is uh, to use the layout attribute. And remember, I said this out, I set it to null. Well, you can actually set it to something more meaningful. And then you get this sort of onion effect. And in this scenario here, the, the, if you see layout and you select a cycle, is uh, the, the top one. And you can see it only has the header and the div with the placeholder. The way that uh, MVC handles this, it will render the, the top one, put it into a buffer, and then it will start rendering uh, the specified layout. The specified layout will then uh, start rendering duct type, uh, HTML head. Uh, and then, because this is later on, you know, it, it happened later than the, the first one, we can actually pick things out of, a, let's say, that you have a dictionary or uh, you, know, you have some stash where you put information. 
uh, that is communicated between uh, the head and the body. Um, so that's one way of, of going about this. Um, and I actually thought that was pretty nifty. Then the other day I saw something from a guy called Jeremy Davis that I actually thought was perhaps even more devious, um, but actually also very nice. But I'm uh, just going to show it here. This was, that was the standard MVC way of dealing with the problem. And let's just uh, get Jeremy's uh, uh, blog post up. All right. So uh, Jeremy uh, ran into the same problem. He actually he came up with a good name for communicating between the body and the head called the conduit. Uh, that's, that spoke to me as I'm renovating my house. Uh, um, but a way of transferring data between the two. And uh, he has a little illustration here saying, I'm doing something in the body. I want stuff to go in the head. How can we do this? And uh, what he did was uh, let's skip his conduit and then just look at, yes, the, the top piece of code here. Um, actually, hang on. Uh, where are we? See his view down there. There we go. Uh, he has a um, it's the view. You see the same piece of code on this page um, where he uh, he renders out two variables. But look at that. The first one is the main one, and the second one is the head one. So he switched the order of the rendering. And when I initially uh, heard this, I said, "Well, he's doing it in the wrong place." <laughs> yeah, but he's just putting it into a variable. When the HTML comes up, it's in the right place. I thought that was a sneaky trick, and I really, I, I really like that. Um, but uh, I guess it's not the native MVC way of doing it. Um, I don't think there's any performance uh, penalties or benefits either way. Um, but an interesting trick nonetheless. Um, then uh, another way of doing this. Um, this is more to do when you have multiple components that. Uh, want to uh, uh, look at the same thing, like, uh, for instance, a, a search. Um, uh, you can have a component uh, A being the sort of uh, search input and component B being the listing. Um, how, how do you avoid them all calling to the search service? Uh, my suggestion uh, was using something like a, a proxy for your services, or you could call it lazy load. I put in a link, and we're not going to spend any time on it. I put in a link here. Uh, the last option is the least desirable, I think, for this, which is um, uh, doing something in either the page level controller or the uh, request pipeline, because at those places, you don't know what components are going to be rendered. So you may end up doing search stuff that you don't need to. Maybe those components are not even output. Um, well, those are some uh, suggestions for solving uh, some of these problems. Next up, hey, an all-time favorite, uh, forms in renderings. So in classic MVC, uh, you have one controller per request. So it's easy to know which controller should be dealing uh, with the form being submitted. In Cycle, you can have any number of controllers. Uh, well, you at least have one. Um, but uh, you could have many uh, component controllers. Um, so how do we decide where the data goes? Well, Psycho uh, did put in a, a form handler for this that, that helps you direct the traffic. Um, whether that's the right way of doing it, I'm not sure. I have a wish list. Um, and I will say this is not, I don't think this is a problem that we've completely uh, done away with in MVC, in Psycho MVC. Um, I'd like to see um, the, um, post redirect get pattern uh, available. So basically, you know, the uh, you post the form, you press a five and it posts again, and you press a five and it posts again. If you implement a post redirect get, it basically means that after you have treated the post data, you do a redirect to a page, which means that uh, doing the get the next time does not execute the post code. Um, so that I think uh, for doing a standard form handling should be a standard feature. Um, it also can help with other issues um, that you will experience when you have multiple controllers as components. Also, uh, I'd like to see the, the postback code um, with the controller where uh, the functionality originated. Um, 
in this, the current cycle uh, way of solving this problem is actually split out a bit. So you have one controller responsible or one view or controller responsible for rendering the form and then a separate controller um, responsible for just dealing with the posted data. Um, I, I want things from MEC just to work. Uh, I don't want anything to be uh, broken, so I want the data attributes uh, and, and so on, uh, and validation uh, to function. And I probably also want something to deal with uh, the scenarios where I'm doing Ajax. Um, so let's look at some solutions for this. Uh, the first one, uh, the phone handler from Psycho uh, that, that we currently offer, uh, it basically, you nominate a, a, a controller and an action to deal with the uh, form. So you put this form handler tag inside the form, uh, and this uh, controller will then be executed uh, very early on in the uh, sort of page, um, uh, 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 render, uh, sorry, not rendering in the sort of uh, re request pipeline. Um, it's been put there for uh, the primary reason is uh, that it's executed before anything is rendered. So, the outsmarting this problem of I can't change it once it's rendered. Uh, so, if you imagine a login form, it's smart to have it at the start. Um, but there are some things around it. The, the controller that you nominate, what happens to the output? You know, if it returns a view, what happens with it? Right, so if you return a view, that's going to be the view for the entire page. Uh, so in this case, you better be inheriting from the cycle controller so you get all of your uh, website Chrome with you. Uh, if not, it's going to be a very bland page. Uh, if you return empty string and null, it just does nothing. <laughs> uh, and then continues to render the page the normal way. Uh, and this sort of inconsistency is... Um, it's an odd behavior, I think. I don't think it's, it's the best behavior. Then, I know we have uh, Renaud somewhere in the crowd, unless he doesn't want to be here, listen to me. Uh, right here, exactly. This man came up with uh, the ultimate fix for multiple forms on one page with CycleBC. And I said to him, that is the ultimate fix, almost. Uh, the only thing it lacks is the post we don't get. Um, but uh, I'll show you what he did anyway. So he relies on something called an action method selector attribute. Um, luckily, he's uh, written a good blog post on it, so you don't have to figure it out yourself. Um, but basically, he has a way of restricting um, uh, the different actions uh, on a page uh, so that they are only run if a specific token is part of the form. So a little bit like uh, the cycle form handler, except that he can uh, he, he can keep the uh, postback code with uh, the actual component. So it's not split it out into a separate uh, uh, controller and it's not run at a random time in the uh, request lifecycle. Um, I like this approach and I, I think this is something that uh, I'll be looking at together with the team at Cycle to see if we can leverage. Um, also, um, when talking to uh, our expert panel, uh, I get the feedback that many use Ajax. Um, and uh, I was promised by Kevin Obi uh, that uh, he would write up a blog post on how to do that with a Cycle Services Client. Um, when you do Ajax, then you, you're sort of out uh, the MVC problem altogether uh, because you can just uh, talk to some JSON. Uh, and then it's more like a client side issue than a MVC issue. I, I think that a, a you know, site MVC should encompass both uh, and uh, be helpful in both directions. Uh, last in the slide, uh, we did talk about post redirect get. Um, the, the biggie here is that you need to transfer the state. So uh, when you do the redirect uh, on the page that you land on, it needs to say, yeah, we, we saved your data or whatever it says. Uh, Congratulations, you won the lottery. Um, there is an example from uh, uh, Prakash uh, on doing that. Uh, I had a long discussion with him back in uh, January 15, um, and uh, I think it's a good solution. It still needs some polishing, and I would love to see it come together with the action uh, method selector way of doing things. So that's a bit about the forms uh, problems. I guess the 
uh, the final word on this is that uh, there is a default way of doing it that will that will work for you. There's a more elegant way of doing uh, uh, forms handling in components, and uh, you can add on some sugar by doing post redirect get. Next up, um, Nathaniel Mann called me out in his presentation and said, "Are we there yet?" Um, and they was talking about performance and the fact that uh, uh, the uh, psycho helper uh, controller method um, is not using caching. Um, so, boo hoo! Uh, <laughs> uh, that sucks because uh, it's a, a nice way of uh, putting in uh, statically rendered controllers. But uh, if you are relying on psycho caching, then it's, it's not so good. Good news. Uh, we've already done this work, and it's uh, going in the next release. Um, and if you can't wait that long, you can go here. Um, just memorize that uh, URL for a second there. Uh, um, quick, quick, jot it down on a piece of paper. Um, no, I think the slides will be shared afterwards. Um, but anyway, I, I put together a little example of, uh, and it's, it's not much code, uh, of how to get out of this uh, pickle. Um, I mean, I haven't elaborated to the, a full solution. I just put in uh, a little bit of example code so you can see what's going on here. There we go. So I'll do like this. Basically, I'm creating a rendering, calling it, say, it's a controller rendering, setting some parameters on it, and then running it through the pipeline. Anyone can do that. So you can go and copy this code if you want to try it out. Good. How are we doing for time? Are we, are we good? Five minutes left. Oh, we're not good. Okay. Uh, next up, areas. Okay. So this was a, a feature from uh, NBC that was missing for the longest time, uh, and uh, we put it into eight one for uh, renderings. Um, and uh, uh, I think it's um, it's turned out really well. Um, when you add areas in MVC, again, it's about scaffolding. In You have like a, your controller folder and your model and view folder at a root level. With areas, you can have multiple of these organized in folders. Um, so basically it means you could have site A and site B uh, segregated in your solution, or you could have the account section and the product section segregated. So you don't have a views folder that is flooded with a million um, uh, uh, CSH HTML files or in the controller folder. Anyway, uh, what we did uh, for this, um, we implemented some default strategies for working out what the. Um, there we go. Hang on. Where are we? Uh, this is the wrong one. No, that was the right one. Uh, some default strategies for working out what the area should be for a given. Uh, rendering. Typically, it's something you uh, solve uh, when you do routing, but for components, of course, there is no routing. So, uh, can you see the field here? Boom, area. So, you can go in and specify an area, and if you do it on uh, this one here and say, hey, it's called my area, um, we'll save it and we'll. Where's the, what is it? Oh, there's a mouse, sorry. And we'll publish it. And Send that out the door. There we go. Next, next. And we'll have a look over here on our site. Um, so the only thing I did was that I put on an area. And as you can see, the HTML has changed a little bit. And in this view here, I'm uh, outputting the type of the of the view. Where is the mouse? <laughs> oh my god. Can't see anything. Oh, there we go. So you can see here, it says my area on the middle of the screen, right? In my solution, I have an areas folder, and this is scaffolding that you get from Visual Studio when you say add new area. So uh, in my area, again, you can see I have the views folder, cycle, sample view rendering. Um, so the important thing here is to note that in the view, uh, I didn't specify the full path for my sample rendering. Um, I just specified some of it. And then it worked out itself which one to go for. So I'm just going to misspell this. I'm going to remove some of our put Soup gone. Um, and we'll publish this. And we are, you know, no presentation is complete without a demo fail. So let's go for, for that. We'll 
Boom! I'm just gonna get a bit smaller. I mean, I did this on purpose. This is uh, the clown uh, entering the arena. Um, so it says, uh, the partial view sample view rendering subcon was not found. I know that because I didn't create one. But underneath, you can see the location where it went off and uh, looked for it. So it tried all sorts of things to work out where it was. And you can see it starts out by looking in the area, my area. Um, so what what does that actually mean for you? It means that you can actually have a fallback strategy. You can you don't have if you implement uh, the views uh, on the sort of root level, uh, you don't have to do it on uh, an area. So you can uh, have sort of a basic way of doing the UI, and then you can opt into doing something more advanced uh, based per area. Another thing. Uh, Second. Uh, yeah, you can you can have custom view folders. Yes, so it it looks at uh, in this case uh, the area and the controller name. As you can see here, it says view psycho in in some places, and that's actually because the uh, page level controller is called psycho controller. So um, anyway, that was a bit about areas. Um, I don't know if you are as excited about it as I am, uh, but uh, you should be because it's a good way to organize your uh, psycho VC solution. Boom! This clown entered the circus. <laughs> okay. Uh, none of you know this guy. It still freaks me out. It's from uh, Stephen King's It. Um, and uh, uh, we still have a problem with ambiguous controller names. So controller names cannot be the same uh, across areas. You have to come up with different names for them. Uh, in standard MVC, it's uh, something that you resolve on the root uh, uh, for that controller. Uh, so it's not that big a problem. We have actually just recently had some very good input from our expert panel, uh, and I think we have a solution for this. Uh, it won't get in the next version, but perhaps in an update just after that. Um, I'm not going to talk much about dependency injection because we already talked about it a little bit, and I know we're pressed for time. Uh, but uh, I will say that uh, as uh, it is um, a, a UI pattern that we're talking about, uh, anything that you do uh, that um, sort of is hard coded into your uh, controller uh, will be hard to test. Um, so if you're going to test it, uh, uh, dependency injection in your controllers is going to be your friend. Um, and uh, well, that brings us to testing because MVC is to a large degree about testing. Um, should you test your models? Yep, you can do that. Uh, that really, you know, there's not much in Psycho that prevents you from doing that. Of course, with the rendering models, I don't know if you want to test that. There's not much on there. Um, Views, uh, I think the general consensus is, no, there's not much point in trying to unit test the HTML coming out of the views. Um, but there are some things you can test around views. Uh, I'll show you that. And controllers, yes, even though they don't control uh, have any business logic, you can look at uh, how they behave. I'm just going to switch into my solution again. Whoop, and quick pedal down to the Next one here. Am I on the test project now? And computer's letting me wait a bit. There we go. So I put in some uh, simple tests here. Spinning up a controller object, uh, calling a method on it. Well, uh, if I call this uh, doodah uh, action method, then it shouldn't return null. That's a, a fair thing to go and test, you know. Uh, also making sure that it is a view result coming back and not uh, some other action result. Um, you can go in and look at things like, what is the view name that is being used? Have I selected the right view for this situation? Um, what, what about the model? What type is it? Uh, how the, has the model come together? I see you. I'm going to need a little bit of time. I've got five. Okay. So a couple of thoughts here. Uh, I was going to make it like a top 10, uh, but uh, I managed to put many things on one line at a time, so um, uh, this is perhaps a little bit opinionated. Um, uh, DI, I think it'll help you in the in the long run, especially with separation of concerns. It gets a lot easier when you you can defer the problem there and then when you write your code, say, "Oh, uh, this sounds hard. I'm going to inject it." <laughs> um, uh, it'll also uh, put you in a situation where you do abstractions, um, and that's going to work for your testability. Um, ah, okay. 
uh, I like my controls skinny and my views even skinnier. I have had some people saying, oh, I put all sorts of uh, crap in my views uh, because it's easy and I can. Uh, I don't like it. I think the views should do nothing. They should be dumb. Um, and the, the controller should also be dumb, not as dumb, but almost. Uh, so it should be like dumb and dumber. That's the controller and the views. Um, also, I love strongly typed item models. Uh, the first ever user group presentation I did on this was generating uh, this with T4. Um, I still think that uh, we can do a lot of work in, in this. Uh, this is not necessarily for MVC, but in general in cycle. Uh, uh, in the meantime, you have some excellent options uh, from the community. Um, and also, uh, I prefer Cycle to follow ASP.NET MVC's native behaviors. And that's one of the things that we've been working on in the team since uh, the 8.0 release, is uh, adjusting the way Cycle uh, MVC works so it doesn't get in the way of the way that the framework works. Um, and uh, I put this one on here. Uh, I think this was great because look at the, look at the resemblance between uh, those two guys. I mean, not, not the monkey, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I thought that was uh, eerie. Um, I don't normally wear glasses. Even on that picture, the glasses that don't have any uh, glass in, uh, just to look smart, right? Eh? Uh, that's a little secret between me and 300 people. Um, OK, Cycle MVC community, this is something that we really uh, spend a lot of energy on. So we have an expert panel uh, with MVPs where we talk about uh, um, this. We do this every second week uh, when I remember it. <laughs> I, I have had one where I missed it. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, we talk about what we're doing with the product and uh, where people want us to go. Uh, we also use user voice. And if you haven't uh, had a look at this yet, you should. Uh, shall we go and see you know, what, what the people want? What is the, the greatest desire? I think we should have a look. Can I see the mouse here? Whoop. Quick. And, uh, do you, do you think so? I don't know. Um, let's have a look. Oh my god, 200 people. So you see if we can get up even higher. All right. Um, uh, the community docs, as we talked about previously. Um, and uh, well, we have got a Cycle MVC country on GitHub. I was going to put like a rest in peace uh, thing on there. Uh, but I guess this is going to be up to the community because the, the primary people on there are now working in product and doing the thing in the product. Uh, do we still need it? Should we use it to see features? What do we want to do with it? Definitely something that you're welcome to tweet me your feedback on. Um, and my expectations for the future of Cycle MVC. Yes, well, it is the future, so get with the program. Uh, also, uh, I know that we need to improve our documentation training. Uh, we have a little bit of feature cap both towards MVC, uh, the native MVC, and uh, web forms we're trying to close. Um, and of course, implement community requested features. Which one was that then? <laughs> OK, I, I remember now. Uh, and of course, also prepare for the future, uh, what's Microsoft doing. Lastly, uh, I'm speeding through to the last slide, uh, an email I got from Peter uh, when he saw my synopsis for this session. Uh, ah, I can't wait to see you juggle. Uh, and uh, he sent me this diagram of how to juggle. I can't juggle. Uh, I can't even read this diagram. Uh, so what I said to him was that I was uh, going to juggle some questions from the audience, and I'll do it on my new side. So do you want to see me on the side for Wheel of Death? Yes. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll start I'm coming. I promise. Are you ready? Fight! Hey! Oh, oh, wait, cheers. Oh! Oh! Are there any questions? Hey! Are you any questions? Yeah, come on there. Yes, so uh, when I was studying uh, NBC before I learned Cycle, yeah. um, one of the biggest things I never would do would be have any tight coupling with, say, SQL Server or my external uh, yeah. uh, uh, things that were supposed to never change. <laughs> so uh, Glass pretty much promotes type coupling. Um, yeah. With with uh, which I, I see is sort of like a, maybe a necessary evil. But if you just want orchestration only, if you just want your views to have type coupling with the one model that it's with, yeah. How do you solve this? I mean, choose one of the ones. What are the thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I think this is a question for Mike. Um, but uh, you know, there's, there's options out there. If you don't like that one, then choose one of the other options for more of item models. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Safety. Woo. Any other questions? Yeah, that's one left. Cam. Why does average routes not initialize the tracker? Uh. In the regular routes. It's because we have a problem with attribute routes in general, but we are fixing that way too. <laughs> yep, Jason. Uh, why size so all new I gradually introduce an MVC. Uh, you can, or choose another contract. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, of course you can. So you can do it on a sort of a page by page level, so you, you can't mix and match, so you can a little bit, but um, you don't go now. But uh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, if you can do that, I'm going to take a look. Ah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Any other questions? No? Nothing? Ah, that's one there. Uh, or any sense of making uh, areas uh, separately compatible from the amounts? Um, yes, but that's, uh, that's not really our problem, is it? That's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you have to, if you do that, then you probably need to look into something like Racer Generator, the one from uh, Stack Overflow. They also need something there. Uh, or change the contract. Change the contract. That's that's another way. That's the motto of the day, isn't it? Change the contract. Any other questions? Hey, come on! I'm still here. Thank you very much.